Half past eleven, Ron muttered at last. We'd better go. They pulled on their bathrobes, picked up their wands, and crept across the tower room, down the spiral staircase, and into the Gryffindor common room. A few embers were still glowing in the fireplace, turning all the armchairs into hunched black shadows. They had almost reached the portrait hole when a voice spoke from the chair nearest them. I can't believe you're going to do this, Harry. A lamp flickered on. It was Hermione Granger, wearing a pink bathrobe and a frown. <laughs> you, said Ron furiously, go back to bed. I almost told your brother, Hermione snapped. Percy, he's a prefect. He'd put a stop to this. Harry couldn't believe anyone could be so interfering. Come on, he said to Ron. He pushed open the portrait of the fat lady and climbed through the hole. Hermione wasn't going to give up that easily. She followed Ron through the portrait hole, hissing at them like an angry goose. <laughs> don't you care about Gryffindor? Don't you, do you only care about yourselves? I don't want Slytherin to win the House Cup, and you'll lose all the points I got from Professor McGonagall for knowing about switching spells. Go away. All right, but I warned you. You just remember what I said when you're on the train home tomorrow. You're so... But what they were, they didn't find out. Hermione had turned to the portrait of the fat lady to get back inside and found herself facing an empty painting. The fat lady had gone on a nighttime visit, and Hermione was locked out of Gryffindor Tower. Now what am go I going to do? She asked shrilly. That's your problem, said Ron. We've got to go. We're going to be late. They hadn't even reached the end of the corridor when Hermione caught up with them. I'm coming with you, she said. You are not. Do you think I'm going to stand out here and wait for Filch to catch me? If he finds all three of us, I'll tell him the truth that I was trying to stop you and you can back me up. You've got some nerve, said Ron loudly. Shut up, both of you, said Harry sharply. I heard something. It was a sort of shuff snuffling. Hmm. Mrs. Norris, breathed Ron, squinting through the dark. It wasn't Mrs. Norris. It was Neville. He was curled up on the floor, fast asleep, but jerked suddenly awake as they crept nearer. Thank goodness you found me. I've been out here for hours. I couldn't remember the new password to get into bed. Keep your voice down, Neville. The password's pig snout, but it won't help you now. The fat lady's gone off somewhere. How's your arm? said Harry. Fine, said Neville, showing them. Madam Pomfrey mended it in about a minute. Good. Well, look, Neville, we've got to be somewhere. We'll see you later. Don't leave me, said Neville, scrambling to his feet. I don't want to stay here alone. The bloody baron's been passed twice already. Ron looked at his watch and then glared furiously at Hermione and Neville. If either of you get us caught, I'll never rest until I've learned that curse of the bogies Krull taught us about and used it on you. Hermione opened her mouth, perhaps to tell Ron exactly how to use the curse of bogies, but Harry hissed at her to be quiet and beckoned them all forward. They flitted along the corridor, striped with bars of moonlight from the high windows. At every turn, Harry expected to run into Filch or Mrs. Norris, but they were lucky. They sped up a staircase to the third floor and tiptoed toward the trophy room. Malfoy and Crab weren't there yet. The crystal trophy cases glimmered where the moonlight caught them. Cups, shields, plates, and statues winked silver and gold in the darkness. They edged along the walls, keeping their eyes on the doors at either end of the room. Harry took out his wand in case Malfoy leaped in and started at once. The minutes crept by. He's late. Maybe he's chickened out, Ron whispered. Then a noise in the next room made them jump. Harry had only just raised his wand when they heard someone speak. It wasn't Malfoy. Sniff around, my sweet. They might be lurking in a corner. It was Filch speaking to Mrs. Norris. Horror struck. Harry waved madly at the other three to follow him as quickly as possible. They scurried silently toward the door, away from Filch's voice. Neville's robes had barely whipped around the corner when they heard Filch enter the trophy room. They're in here somewhere, they heard him mutter, probably hiding. 
This way, Harry mouthed to the others, and petrified, they began to creep down a long gallery full of suits of armor. They could hear Filch getting nearer. Neville suddenly let out a frightened squeak and broke into a run. He tripped, grabbed Ron around the waist, and the pair of them toppled right into a suit of armor. The clanging and crashing were enough to wake the whole castle. <laughs> run, Harry yelled. And the four of them sprinted down the gallery, not looking back to see whether Filch was following. They swung around door, the doorpost and galloped down one corridor and then another, Harry in the lead without any idea where they were or where they were going. They ripped through the tapestry and found themselves in a hidden passageway, hurtled along it and came out near the charms classroom, which they knew was miles from the trophy room. I think we've lost him, Harry panted, leaning against the cold wall and wiping his forehead. Neville was bent double, wheezing and spluttering. I told you, Hermione gasped, clutching the, at the stitch in her chest. I told you. We have got to get back to Gryffindor Tower, said Ron, quickly as possible. Malfoy tricked you, Hermione said to Harry. You realize that, don't you? He was never going to meet you. Filch knew someone was going to be in the trophy room. Malfoy must have tipped him off. Harry thought she was probably right, but he wasn't going to tell her that. Let's go. It wasn't going to be that simple. They hadn't gone more than a dozen places when a doorknob rattled and something... Sorry, they hadn't gone more than a dozen paces when a doorknob rattled and something came shooting out of a classroom in front of them. It was Peeves. He caught sight of them and gave a squeal of delight. Shut up, Peeves. Please, you'll get us thrown out. Peeves cackled. Wandering around at midnight, ickle firsties. Tut, tut, tut. Naughty, naughty, you'll get caughty. Not if you don't give us away, Peeves, please. Should I, should tell Filch I should, said Peeves in a saintly voice, but his eyes glittered wickedly. It's for your own good, you know. Get out of the way, snapped Ron, taking a swipe at Peeves, but this was a big mistake. Students out of bed, Peeves bellowed. Students out of bed down the charms corridor. Ducking under Peeves, they ran for their lives, right to the end of the corridor where they slammed into a door, and it was locked. This is it, Ron moaned as they helplessly pushed the door. We're done for. This is the end. They could hear footsteps, Filch running as fast as he could toward Peeves' shouts. Oh, move over, Hermione snarled. She grabbed Harry's wand, tapped the lock, and whispered, Alohomora. The lock clicked and the door swung open. They piled through it and shut it quickly and pressed their ears against it, listening. Which way did they go, Peeves? Filch was saying. Quick, tell me. Say, please. Don't mess with me, Peeves. Now where did they go? Shan't say nothing if you don't say please, said Peeves in his annoying sing-song voice. All right, please. Nothing! Ha! I told you I wouldn't say nothing if you didn't say please. Ha ha! <laughs> And they heard the sound of Peeves whooshing away and Phil's cur Filch cursing in rage. He thinks this door is locked, Harry whispered. I think we'll be okay. Get off, Neville. For Neville had been tugging on the sleeve of Harry's bathrobe for the last minute. What? Harry turned around and saw quite clearly what. For a moment, he was sure he'd walked into a nightmare. This was too much on top of everything that had happened so far. They weren't in a room, as he had supposed. They were in a corridor, the forbidden corridor on the third floor, and now they knew why it was forbidden. They were looking straight into the eyes of a monstrous dog, a dog that filled the whole space between ceiling and floor. It had three heads, three pairs of rolling mad eyes, three noses twitching and quivering in their direction, three drooling mouths, saliva hanging in slippery ropes from yellowish fangs. It was standing quite still, all six eyes staring at them, and Harry knew that the only reason they weren't already dead was that their sudden appearance had taken it by surprise, but it was quickly getting over that, and there was no mistaking what those thunderous growls meant. Harry groped f for the doorknob. Between filch and death, he'd take filch. They fell backward. Harry slammed the door shut, and they ran. They almost flew 
back down the corridor. Filch must have hurried off to look for them somewhere else, because they didn't see him anywhere. But they hardly cared. All they wanted to do was put as much space as possible between them and that monster. They didn't stop running until they reached the portrait of the fat lady on the seventh floor. Where on earth have you all been, she asked, looking at their bathrobes, hanging off their shoulders and their flushed, sweaty faces. Never mind that. Pig snout, pig snout, panted Harry, and the portrait swung forward. They scrambled into the common room and collapsed, trembling into armchairs. It was a while before any of them said anything. Neville, indeed, looked as if he'd never speak again. "'What do they think they're doing keeping a thing like that locked up in a school?' said Ron finally. "'If any dog needs exercise, that one does.' <laughs> Hermione had got both her breath and her bad temper back again. "'You don't use your eyes, any of you, do you?' she snapped. "'Didn't you see what it was standing on?' "'The floor,' Harry suggested. "'I wasn't looking at its feet. I was too busy with its heads.' "'No, not the floor.' It was standing on a trap door. It's obviously guarding something. She stood up, glaring at them. I hope you're pleased with yourselves. We could all have been killed. Or worse, expelled. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to bed. Ron stared at her, his mouth open. No, we don't mind, he said. You'd think we dragged her along, wouldn't you? But Hermione had given Harry something else to think about as he climbed back into bed. The dog was guarding something. What had Hagrid said? Gringotts was the safest place in the world for something you wanted to hide, except perhaps Hogwarts. It looked as though Harry had found out where the grubby little package from Vault 713 was. Yes! <laughs>